Hello, I'm Dr. LaDonna Osborne, and I'm coming to you with another segment in the stories that we're sharing celebrating my father, Dr. T.L. Osborne's 100th year of ministry influence. 2023 would be the year that my father would have turned 100. He had such a long and fruitful life. He is an example to ministers all over the world. He lived well. He lived purposefully. He passed well. He was peaceful. And he left a, a trail behind him of gospel messengers. So, so we want to take this time this throughout this entire year Every month, we're posting a new, just a TLO story, T.L. Osborne story, just something, something that's, that, that will help us reflect and see what can we learn from this very, very fruitful and exemplary life. So we have already talked about his youth, his upbringing, his birth, um, how, he, how he accepted the Lord, how he launched as a preacher, how he met my mother, how they married, how they began their ministry how they went to India, and how what a pivotal time that was because of the disappointment. But it, they, it brought them home uh, with a good question, and that's what we talked about last month. They came home with a question, how do we make a difference in a very religious world with very sincere religious people? And of course, they found the answer. I went over that in detail last month. Now, I want to pick up the story Today and let's talk about where it went from there. When when these visions, we talked about the four visions that uh, my father received, and it's all recorded in his book Biblical Healing. Uh, those four ver- visions really launched my mother and father. They were pastoring a church at the time, and when they when they began to experience these revelations of Jesus. And they had the answer, how do we convince people of other faiths that Jesus is who he claimed to be? Well, when they had that answer, they decided to launch, to go and start putting this into practice. So they resigned their church again. By this time, I'm nine months old. My brother is about two and a half. And, And it happens that we began traveling as a family. We began traveling as a family. You know, uh, this was in 19, the early part of 1948. And in those days, there were many evangelists, many healing evangelists. God was doing something amazing, restoring the truths of divine healing to the church. And so there were evangelists all over the United States with tent, tent meetings. They were putting up tents, having healing revivals. And so my father was one of those. And, and yet, There was something that was pulling on him to not just give himself to the United States or to the, the, at that time, a Christianized country. And so his passion was to go someplace else, wherever the gospel is heard less, where Christ is not so well known. And so in, in 1948, uh, we, the first overseas mission was to the island of Jamaica. That wasn't very far, but that's as far uh, as as they could afford to travel with two babies, the two of them. And also, in Jamaica, they speak English, so that was encouraging. They didn't know quite how they would communicate if there were other languages. Now, of course, we know. But at that time, they're a young couple, and they're, they're launching. Now, I want to mention to you, to encourage you. Be willing to do what has not been done before. This is really, really an important principle. My mother and father had no one to follow their example. They had no one to ask. They had no one to brainstorm with them, even to pray with them to see, was this a good thing? They just were making decisions based on what they had learned from studying the life of Jesus. And remember when Jesus said, I must go to other towns also? Well, that that impressed my father, that it's important for us to go to yet other places. So we went to Jamaica, 
And that was the beginning. Now, uh, there, there was, let me see, right here, I think in, this is the book, this is a pictorial book called The Gospel According to T.L. and Daisy. I love this. This just starts out when they're just, just young, young, young people, and eventually it goes country by country by country, event by event. And here's this statement uh, about their ministry in Jamaica. They were there for 17 weeks, ministering multiple times every day for that length of time. My mother and father take turns preaching. They each had their separate prayer lines, and they were praying for the sick. Amazing things happened. Now I want to just show you this. It said that during that time, excuse me, 13 weeks, yes, 13 weeks, thousands were healed, 9,000 people accepted Christ, totally blind people, 90 totally blind people received their sight, and this says hundreds of others gradually received their sight, 90 immediately received their sight, 125 deaf mutes, those are both deaf and mute, cannot speak, instantly talked and received their hearing, and scores of others were gradually healed. And only the Lord knows how many thousands of other people were healed as we prayed for them. Now, that's one little paragraph in this book, and I'm pointing this out to you because it's pictorial and it's in dialogue form. It's like you're sitting down and visiting with uh, my, my mother and father during these early years of their ministry. But our segment today is focused on putting this message to the test. Are the promises of God valid? Is Jesus Christ still alive today? Can, can, do we have authority over spirits of disease? Can we heal disease, diseases? Uh, can ordinary people do extraordinary works in the name of Jesus? So this was, this was what was happening during this segment. Well, this was just the launch. This was the launch. For the first six years of, of my parents' ministry, as we were traveling from nation to nation, we were in Central and South America. So after we finished the islands, then we went into Central South America, and we were in that area for six years. And it was, it was a very difficult time because at that time, the Catholic Church was very strong, and um, the great opposition to what was called evangelical churches, that's everything that's not Catholic in those days. And so it became very difficult. Our permits would be canceled. My father was arrested multiple times. Our lives were at risk. We were, that we, many things happened that were intended to kill us. They were never successful. But the point is, it was, it was at that stage, my father, mother, this young family is just obediently putting into practice what they see Jesus doing. Yes, there are hardships, but you don't stop. If you can only go to a nearby place, go there. That's what my father and mother did. They waited. The ministry didn't begin the way you see it today. It began gradually. So I want you to, re I want you to reflect on this young couple making this decision, resigning their church, selling all their furniture, selling their house, selling their cars, and getting on a plane and going to an island. Now, in these days, in those days, we didn't have to buy round-trip tickets. So we would go to one place and stay as long as we wanted to, as, as long as God was, work, was working and the people were being ministered to. We'd go to those places, and then when it was time, raise enough money to get tickets to the next place. That was the pattern. So many, many wonderful things took place. So I'm encouraging you. Now, I'm not trying to sell material, but this is a book I do believe will help you really understand the roots of this ministry and the impact of this ministry. And what we're doing all through this, this season of, of 2023, we are highlighting specific events from my father's 100 years of life, ministry, and influence. So I'll see you next month. We'll pick up the story. I want to tell you some pioneering things that my mother and father did and encourage you. You can do something new, something that no one has done before. God bless you. Think big with God.